we're gonna do, as you can probably guess by now, the same sort of drill that we've been doing in the morning. We're gonna allow each of the speakers to give about five minutes or so of introduction, and we're just gonna wing it from there. All right, so hopefully, if you guys say something provocative, it'll generate the first question. I guess, Rodrigue, you're up first because you're the closest. Hello. All right, so I'm Rod Ulens from company Voxbone. Um, Voxbone is, um, is a carrier that I believe is really in the middle of two worlds. We are on, the, on one side a real telco with licenses, with traditional SS7 interconnect and all, and all of that. And on the other side, where we started the whole company with the idea in mind that the telco would be completely automated, so it's fully IP-based in the core, and it's with a complete API. Um, since, in, since its inception, we have an API available for our customers to, to purchase our services. Now, our service is really specialized. We only do one thing, it's providing the ID numbers. So we provide the ID numbers to um, other service providers, only in wholesale, and then they use the DID numbers to enable their service for innovative applications that mix the web and the telecom. That's in two words. Okay, so two companies to keep track of. Network IP, uh, our CEO Pete Patello was talking this morning. Uh, on the one side is an honest-to-goodness telco with carrier relations all over the world. Uh, Texas company based out of Austin and Dallas. Um, all the good telecom stuff, points of presence in LA, Texas, Mexico. And then Jaduka on the other side is our wholly owned subsidiary, uh, 15, 16 people based likewise out of uh, Dallas for the business offices and Austin for the technology offices, which is our 2.0 arm. And the point is that Jaduka leverages the network IP telco infrastructure in a way that tries to encourage application development and services development like we've been talking about since the sessions this morning. Uh, and I think I'll just leave it at that and say that the provocative point that I'd like to get to is how we get actually these applications that we all seem to be talking about into companies that have a telco mindset in the first place without doing what we've done, which is partitioning into two separate companies. I'm Michael Vase. I'm CEO of Jaja. Uh, Jaja is a leading, for those who may not know it, Jaja is a leading um, global IP telephony infrastructure and service provider. Uh, in just over two years, we grew to 10 million users, and what has happened is that not only did we see a, track, a lot of traction with the user base, but also a number of large players, be it uh, telephony, uh, fixed line or mobile operators, as well as cable operators and, um, I, and other IP companies, would come to us and ask if they could use some of our services. So we've, we've since made available the uh, numerous services, both front-end applications as well as back-end applications. We've made those available to a number of those players, and we've seen a very strong demand. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see, actually, you know, we talked recently and we, we released a survey where we had talked to over 15 telecom executives in the United States and in Europe to understand some of their pain point and some of the opportunities they saw. And clearly, one of them was on the IP side, and I think that it might be interesting to kind of look at how uh, major operators, as well as cable companies, are making the move from existing services to some of the new applications that are required to be competitive in the marketplace. Okay, Eric, you're up. Uh, hi, I'm Eric Ryer. I'm CTO of Mobivox. Uh, just to give you a brief history of what Mobivox is, uh, a few years ago I was working with a big uh, speech rec company and I was building a voice XML platform. And there's a lot of things I didn't like about the, the platform, the way it works, all the concepts inside. So I decided to, to build my own platform. So I built that uh, on the side. I worked in consulting work and I, I built the platform and two years ago I, I started a company called Mobivox with this platform. It took about a year to, uh, to build the platform more robust and to have uh, just built the applications and we launched our first product a year ago. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a simple application. Users come to our website, they, they, they uh, build their contact list and then we give them an access number, they call and then reach any one of their contacts. They can also reach any Skype contacts and it works on any phone, uh, anywhere. We've got phone numbers uh, in about 40 countries. Uh, a few weeks ago, 
we, we open the, the platform, we launch an API. It's a, right now it's a small API, you can access our services, but in the future we'll, we'll, we'd like to access the whole, to, to open up the whole platform. Uh, soon, uh, users will be able to do uh, SIP, SIP calls, SIP to Skype calls. So we'll have a first SIP to, to Skype call gateway where users will be able to just make Skype calls without buying any hardware or anything. It's just ready to go. So in a nutshell, that, that's, what we, what, that's what we do. Okay, now I'm expecting there to be a lot of questions about this in case you didn't catch what's going on here. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, issue of platform has come up. Uh, the issue of whether you're complementary to or possibly considered competing with traditional voice services has been at least implied. Question for the panelists, is there any way in hell for anybody in the world to avoid the fact that voice is an application, runs over an IP platform, people sort of know how to do this, it's going to get integrated into a lot of other applications with or without anybody's consent. I mean, does anybody need permission to do this? And if so, if they don't need permission, what do you think service providers ought to do about this? Just, just to ask the political question. <laughs> My opinion on this, on this is, uh, well, of course, that the, there is no way to, to stop that. Um, just because of the fact that all the service providers are providing already today APIs um, for, for, um, for, the, um, for the developers. And not only traditional telcos, but also mobile, uh, mobile operators uh, like Orange, uh, Vodafone are opening APIs. So once you have all these API, how, how do you want to stop the developers from creating innovative applications? Um, there is not, re not, re not really a way to stop them, in my opinion. So. Yeah, strong, st strong agree. I mean, if we, you know, we looked at, at Gary's opening slides this morning, we see, okay, you know, the worry is how do you make up for the revenue? You can sell more stuff, I think was the technical language that you used, and that involves courting us somehow as a developer community and, and being real about it and not just, it's, it's by the way, it's not enough to just put out an API, you have to actually encourage use of that API on top of your network and that's what, that's how, that's the litmus test for whether you have a real commitment to that program or not. It's not the presence of an API but the encouragement of use and development on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. What, you know, what, what I think we see is that Technology just moves very fast, and what, this, what the marketplace allows us to do is consumers will embrace that technology wherever it comes from. So um, whenever a new technology comes to market, it brings with it a lot of opportunities, but only also a number of threats. And I think the challenge that all of us in business face then is how do, how do we define the right mix between those two, and how do we define the right business model so that it's, it's all you know, viable? Because free is nice, but free, you know, usually doesn't last long in, in, the, in, this, in this world. So finding that mix is very important. But when I look back as a consumer at my own bill, and actually I was talking about it at lunch um, with some of the people at the table, is my own phone bill has gone up very significantly, quote unquote phone bill, right? You know, between the cell phone, the landline, um, you know, cable and so forth. So everything, the overall package has gone up. And several years ago, when, when the internet came up, I think there was a lot of concern about what is, this gonna, what is it gonna be since it's quote unquote free. And we still look at it as free, although I'm paying a very large charge. So I think that it's there, it's coming, and it's a question now of how can we best embrace it and how can we find the right business models so that it's actually viable long term. Yeah, uh, for our part, we, we've been working with partners on, on both sides of the equation. So we've got termination partners on one side and we've got people that want to build applications using our technology. So the demand is there. There's so many people that want to build applications on the, on the other side. There's so many people that want to provide uh, minutes and to provide the, the infrastructure to, to deliver those, those minutes. So uh, it's, for us, it's, it, it's already open. It, there's no question. There's nothing stopping it. It's, it's there. Now, I've been one of these people that actually, I know there are people who essentially take the position that the Googles and the others of the world need to be fought because it's, it's a mortal threat and that's really the stance you should take. I, I don't agree with that. I think that this is part of the way the world's going to be and you embrace it or you die. Uh, any thoughts about that? Right. 
I, I very much see it that way, and I think it's just, it, it's just a matter of finding that right mix and doing it. And I think that what we see is a lot of the companies, although they may not have brought some of the services to market, it, it might be less a question of will we or will we not embrace it as to how do we embrace it and how can we bring it to market in a profitable way and how can we leverage our existing infrastructure in order to do that. And how can we potentially do a number of pilot programs where we think, as Jaja, that managed services are, are a very interesting way to go because you can test things out, you can bring things to market quickly and actually...